and on the day in question when the scabs were brought in they were rushed in uh, with the under police escort in a in a bus a coach with the uh, meshed up windows and at no stage at no stage were our official pickets allowed to picket they were not allowed to communicate with their own members and of course that's what sparked all the trouble off i would say there must have been 1500 to 2000 riot police and immediately they they piled out of the vans they immediately went for the pickets in full riot gear chased the pickets many of them went in homes nearby homes but this <coughs> didn't stop the police they actually went into the houses those who refused to open the doors had their doors broken open windows were smashed the right police smashed windows to make entrance someone went and shut the door like because the doors were open shut the door and i went through to shut the back door well i wasn't quick enough and there was about four or five police there so I says, you're not getting in here. There's nobody in here. Because them lads, what was in, was already in, you know. Anyway, I got my head, like, in between the kitchen door and the wall. So I tried to keep it, you know, so they couldn't get in. Anyway, I said, you're not, get, you're not getting in. And instead of pushing the door to get in, my head was in between. They pulled it towards them. Well, the door hit here, and my head hit the wall, my glasses went. And that's all I remember. I, I just heard the son say, get her a drink of water and phone for the doctor. I, I didn't remember night after that. There was a kid coming up who was streaming with blood. He'd been attacked with four policemen. Uh, when I asked for a first aid kit to stop the bleeding, I was told, go and ask your sympathisers across the road. You can see from there, he'd got a gash down the back of his head, he needed at least eight stitches. And a gash above his eye that needed at least four. The only way they'd let me treat him was through a window of a transit. <coughs> and it's nearly impossible. I'd got no first aid kit, no nothing. They'd got first aid kits on board, but they let, wouldn't let me use it. Is that the police if officer if there? it was perceived yeah. as a thing, you can see how defensive they are. Only draw your truncheons in self-defence. That's a baseball bat, not a truncheon. He couldn't even put it in his pocket. Uh, they they came into the village with them. Yeah, right. So it was obviously it was preconceived oh. before they even got in the village. That because there's no way he's drawn that since he's come in the village unless he went down his trouser leg. That's an unusual sight as well. If you look on his shoulders, he's got numbers. The majority of them, who are not policemen, we believe, have not got numbers. They're supposed to, by law apparently, wear numbers on the uniform so you can identify them. There's no numbers there. That's that's right, is it, you know? Same as my mate, he got arrested that day, Wednesday. And uh, they gave him a bit of an hammering light before the permit van. They handcuffed him with his hands behind back, twisted handcuffs, so they dug into his wrist. They come back half an hour later, about five or six of them, opened van doors and says, is anybody seriously hurt? And him like a silly chuff like said, no. So they whacked him in the stomach and said, yeah, now. 